Hi, and welcome to the first video out of the video tutorial series on Hibernate. This is Lokam Chanakya, and I'll be taking you through the Hibernate framework and what exactly is ORM. So let's start right away. So what exactly is ORM and why do we use it? Most of you must have used JDBC to actually connect a Java database through Java code. And that's pretty simple and it can be used, but the reason why we use ORM is because when we use relational databases, all data stored in a relational database like MySQL or Oracle DB is actually in the form of rows and columns. That is, data is stored in tables in the form of records. But in objects in Java, all data is stored in the form of objects. So converting an object into a relational table in a database is actually difficult. So that's the reason why we use ORM frameworks such as Hibernate, which actually map these objects or our POJO classes, where POJO stands for plain old Java object, directly to the relational databases for us using configuration files and these POJO classes along with them. So it actually makes our task much more easier. So instead of writing these queries and everything in SQL, in JDBC with the drivers and everything, we actually just configure which POJO class should be converted to the respective table in the relational database. So what is Hibernate? Hibernate is an open source ORM solution. It's an ORM framework basically for Java applications. It can, use for, it can be used for both standalone and web, web applications, but it's mostly used along with struts for web applications to support the NVC architecture. It basically sits between the Java objects and the relational database tables and helps the, to persist the data from the object format to the relational database format, which is actually rows and columns. So this is the Hibernate architecture. What we basically do is we, we use persistence objects, which, were, which are POJO classes that is the plain old Java object classes. And using those classes, we use the Hibernate framework to actually convert these persistent objects into SQL calls, which are in turn sent to a JDBC API. The JDBC API then converts all these SQL calls into native SQL, or depending on what the driver actually is, the type of the driver, JDBC driver, it converts the Hibernate calls or JDBC calls into the SQL format and then the database data is retrieved or you execute an update on the database. So the Hibernate sits between the persistence object and the JDBC API, as you see in the architecture. So we have six main component classes that we use um, in Hibernate, and these are the classes that we'll be using throughout this tutorial. Uh, we'll start off with the four basic classes, which are the configuration classes, which you have to use by default in whatever Hibernate framework you use. Uh, the session factory is the first one. Um, we have to create sessions and transactions using the session class and the transaction class. Each session indicates uh, a, a particular period or a time over which Hibernate transactions are taking place. And each transaction is actually an operation that's being done on the database. So an insert operation is one one operation. So in a transaction, you can um, each transaction can contain multiple number of operations. Like it can contain multiple number of insertions, multiple number of deletions. But once all the successful operations are completed, the transaction is committed, so that um, all the transactions are completed completely, and the data in the database remains consistent. So a session maintains these transactions. And to build a session, we use the session factory class. And the session factory class is actually built using the configuration class, which helps us to map the POJO um, class directly to the XML file. So the configuration class tells us that we have to configure our application using a particular XML file. And that XML file then defines which POJO class it's being mapped to. The next two classes are the query class and the criteria class, with SQL query also being added in there. We can write queries in three basic ways. Um, when using Hibernate. The first way would be used would be to use native SQL queries using the SQL query class. We can also create queries in the Hibernate query language, which we'll be covering later on in later tutorials. 
using the query class. And to retrieve data, we have another easier way. Instead of using database queries, we can directly interact with the POSER classes using the criteria class. Hibernate.cfg.xml is the default name given for the XML configuration file, which supplies all the information for the POSO, POSO class and relational database mapping. But we can also give other names for the hibernate.cfg.xml file. The configuration file does not have to be named that, but this is the default name that's given to the configuration class. The XML configuration file usually contains the dialect. The dialect basically tells us how to convert the objects or POJO class commands into SQL queries. So do we have to convert it for MySQL? Do we have to convert it for um, Oracle or DB2 or whatever database we're using? The dialect tells us which database. The database URL and credentials are basically the remote location of the, of the database if you have it remotely located or the local host location if it's present on your particular system. And the credentials are its username and password so that you connect to the MySQL database or whichever database you are using. We'll be using MySQL throughout the tutorials. And the mapping resources tell us which POJO class is being used to be mapped to a particular table in the database. So this is a list of what you'll actually be learning throughout these tutorials and we'll be having a brief tutorial set to define the configurations and the project structure of a Hibernate application. Then we'll be going into actually creating it using the Eclipse IDE. In the later stages, we'll look into the CRUD operations being implemented using Hibernate. Then we'll look at the three types of queries, um, looking into Hibernate query language, the native SQL queries, and also using criterias for retrieving data. Thank you, and we hope that you'll have a good time with us. Look into our next videos so that you can learn more about Hibernate and then go into implementing your own crop.